In the last video, we discussed a fake Japanese heavy which was the product of unreliable source material and mistaken identity. However, although that particular vehicle was not real, that does not mean Japan never built any heavy tanks. Many designs of supposed vehicles have cropped up over the years such as the iconic OI and others, many of which originated from the game World of Tanks. Though there is some evidence to support an OI prototype did exist, it is far from conclusive. Today, we will look at the only heavy tanks we can confirm Japan actually built, the Type 91 and Type 95 heavy tanks. With the introduction of tanks during the First World War, nations around the globe began to take an interest in these strange new weapons. One such nation was Japan, who purchased their first tank from Britain following the end of the war. Over the course of the interwar period, they would continue to purchase small numbers of tanks from Britain and France including Whippets, Renault FTs, Renault NCs, and most important for this video, one Vickers Mark C. Development of the first domestic Japanese armor began in June of 1925 using different design elements from the various foreign designs for a basis. As with most Japanese projects, information is hard to come by and sources tend to vary their information wildly, so bear in mind that parts of this video may be inaccurate as I am relying heavily on only a few sources. One thing they do all agree on though is that the first domestic Japanese design is that of the Type 87 Experimental Tank No. 1 Chi-I. This medium tank with its multi-turreted layout was clearly at least partially inspired by designs like the A1E1 Independent which had made its debut the year prior as well as other Vickers designs. Unlike the fake Ishii 108 though, this design was completed and armed with a 57mm cannon in the main turret with a hull mounted 7.2mm machine gun and rear machine gun in the butt turret. Every source I can find just labels the front MG as a hull MG, but looking at the photos I do question this a bit. The shaping to me indicates a traversable turret which would connect with later designs. That is just a theory from me from the images, so it could just be a fixed MG with a weird housing. Though this particular tank did not see success, it speaks volumes of the Japanese industry which was able to produce a home-brewed design within the span of only two years, even if the armor plates were only mild steel. Following that, a second prototype would be completed with new design elements incorporated from the newly acquired Vickers Mark C. Developed as an improvement over the front engine Vickers Mark I and II, the Vickers medium tank Mark C began in 1925. As with many of these interwar tanks, it took heavy influence from the vehicles of the First World War. This is most apparent in the plethora of machine guns which dotted the vehicle with one mounted on the rear of the turret, one on either side of the hull, and a bow machine gun. As for the primary armament, the vehicle was equipped with a 57mm cannon in a traversable turret. Although the vehicle had reasonably good mobility for a tank of its time, with a speed of 32 km per hour thanks to the 110 horsepower 6 cylinder aircraft engine powering it, the protection was not quite as good. With reportedly only around 6.5mm of armor at its thickest point, this would make the tank vulnerable to even some small arms. In yet another strange design choice, the main hatch for the crew seems to be a door placed on the frontal plate. How exactly the crew was supposed to evacuate the vehicle, which would presumably have the main hatch pointed directly towards enemy fire, is unclear. Perhaps Vickers just assumed the health and safety of the crew wasn't important to the export market. Unsurprisingly, following trials, the design was rejected by the British Army, who hadn't requested it to begin with, and the project essentially ended after a single prototype was built. Their next design, the Mark D, was nearly the same vehicle, but that is a topic for another day. Vickers was still able to pawn off the failed Mark C to a customer though, with Japan purchasing the tank from them in 1927. Upon arrival, the 10-ton high-speed trial tank, as one source labels it, was shown at the Toya Magahara Parade Ground. Along with the tank, several Vickers engineers were present to teach the Japanese how to operate the vehicle. Either they did a really bad job with that task, or further issues with the design caused a catastrophic malfunction for the vehicle. When attempting to climb a hill, the tank apparently backfired from fuel which leaked out of the carburetor, causing the engine to catch fire. 
Although the vehicle seems to have been saved, the engine was completely destroyed. A replacement engine would later be delivered, but this event would have a significant impact on later Japanese tank projects. Using both the original prototype of the Type 87 and the Mark C, the Japanese would then create a second prototype tank known as the Type 89. This medium tank would go on to become one of Japan's first mass-produced tanks as well as the first production tank to use a diesel engine after the fire in the Vickers tank. We can see further influence with the addition of a front door as well as the rear machine gun moving from a dedicated turret to the rear of the primary turret. Although the rest of the story of the Type 89 is worthy of its own video, let's move back to look at the heavy tank designs. With the Type 89 entering production, it was decided to make a heavier vehicle from the Type 87 concept as the need for a medium tank was now less urgent. As with the Type 89, the information gleaned from the Mark C was taken into account for the new design which would become known as the Type 91 heavy tank. While editing this video, I ran across some mention of another prototype built from the Chi I shown in these two photos. No mention of this vehicle was made in any of the other sources I have, but there definitely seems to be differences between it, the Type 89 prototype, and the Type 91. As of now, I cannot fully explain this discrepancy, but perhaps this was either a modification of the original Type 87 or another prototype entirely, linking that and the Type 91. It could also just be an early Type 91, as they look extremely similar aside from the front turret. Perhaps I missed something while researching, or there was more information discovered more recently, which was not included in any of the source material I have available. Either way, this does not really change much regarding the Type 91, I just felt it was worth mentioning. Back to the Type 91, the requirement for increased firepower would see the tank increase in both size and weight. At a weight of 18 metric tons, the tank boasted an armor protection of up to 20 millimeters, slightly better than that of the Type 89. Where it differed more significantly was the armament. The Type 91 was fitted with three turrets, with the rear turret remaining from the Chi I, along with a new one on the front. This made room for a main armament of either a 57mm or 70mm in the primary turret and a machine gun in each secondary turret. To power this vehicle, a BMW 6-cylinder engine was chosen which put out 224 horsepower, giving the vehicle a top speed of around 25 km per hour. The easiest way to tell this tank apart from the later Type 95 is by looking at the suspension. The Type 91 used the same system as the Type 87, which used many small road wheels like the Vickers design. Later vehicles would switch to a simpler form of the leaf spring suspension with 9 road wheels per side compared to 17. Although functional, the Type 91 was not accepted for production. Trials of the vehicle would go on to influence the next and final of the Japanese heavies confirmed to have been built, known as the Type 95. The Type 95, or as it is sometimes called, the Rogo, was essentially an improvement to every aspect of the previous design. Completed in 1934, the armor was increased to 35mm at its thickest on the front, with 30mm on the sides and 20mm on the rear. Although this may not seem like much, for that time it would have been fairly well protected. As for the firepower, that was also improved. Now, rather than a 57mm, the main turret housed a 70mm cannon, with the front turret also being increased to house a 37mm. As should be expected with this increase in protection and armament, came additional weight with the Type 95 weighing in at 26 metric tons. To somewhat compensate for this, the engine was modified to now output 290 horsepower, but the power to weight ratio still fell from 12.4 horsepower per ton to 11.1 horsepower per ton, with the top speed similarly dropping slightly to 22 km per hour. Unlike the previous design, the Type 95 would have a total of four examples built, with these being trialed after completion. According to one British report in 1939, a single example of a heavy tank was displayed during an exhibition in Tokyo. The information is a bit vague and no photos were able to be taken, but this could have been either the single Type 91 or one of the Type 95s. According to the report, the vehicle was armed with a 57mm gun as well as a QF or quick-firing cannon in the front. 
To my knowledge, none of the Type 91s were equipped with the frontal 37mm, so it is possible that either the spectator estimated the cannon size wrong, the Type 95 at one point was fitted with a 57mm, or the Type 91's frontal turret was upgunned to the standard of the Type 95s. Either way, it is interesting to see that such a forgotten project was known about even prior to World War II. As for the fate of these heavies, we know very little. One source mentions some limited use in China, but this seems to be unconfirmed. It is possible there was some field testing done with the Type 91 and Type 95s. With the information we have currently, there is no way to say for certain. Either way, these would not see any serious production as the limited mobility made the vehicles less appealing than the more mobile Type 89s and later designs. It does seem that at least one of each type survived till the end of World War II, with the Type 91 being photographed with some Americans, as well as one Type 95 at the Yasukunu Shrine minus the 37mm. Neither of these survive today. We do know that the remaining Type 95s did not go entirely unused, with their chassis being chosen for some heavy SPG variants. One of these, known as the Hero or Hero Sha, was an open-topped vehicle with a Type 14 105mm cannon. This one was actually built with photos showing one prototype. As for the other variant, known as the Jiro or Jiro Sha, it may have been a closed-top superstructure on the Type 95 chassis to mount either the same gun or another weapon. It is not known if this was built as no photos exist today. The armament of these two vehicles also vary wildly from source to source, so I can't tell for certain what the true armaments were. Neither seems to have seen any sort of combat. One final heavy tank as well as the super heavy OI are rumored to have seen some degree of development and even possibly prototyping, but there is little to no evidence of this. The first vehicle, sometimes referred to as the Type 97, may be a variant of the Type 95 with the ability to move along rails like the Type 95 Soki. There could also be some connection to the rumored heavy tank M104, but the existence of that vehicle is yet to be proven. It does appear in some original documents and intelligence reports from the era, but as we see with the case of the Ishii 108, this does not confirm the design by itself. With the M104 reportedly being a planned design for Mitsubishi, who also seemed to have been responsible for the SPGs we talked about earlier, maybe they did further experimentation with the chassis. This is all purely speculation on my part though, so don't take this as anything conclusive. More than likely, this is another case of inaccurate intelligence reports. Similarly, the OI does seem to have been a real project for a Super Heavy by Japan, with a blueprint of it surviving as well as a track link which could be from a prototype of it. In my opinion, there was likely some sort of test vehicle built, but this cannot be confirmed without either some sort of production report or a photograph. This leaves the Type 91 and Type 95 as the only confirmed Japanese heavy tanks to be built. Although Japanese tank development and production was limited compared to other World War II warring nations, we saw today that they did still have the capacity to build complex vehicles even during the interwar period. These may not have been successful enough for full-scale production, however, it is likely these sorts of projects helped teach valuable lessons for future tank projects. Unfortunately, Japanese vehicles are notoriously hard to research for numerous reasons, including language barriers and lack of original source documents, so piecing together a detailed history of them is difficult. Hopefully, I managed to get a good overview of the topic for you all without missing anything major. If you did enjoy this video, let me know by liking and subscribing to show it. Thanks as always to my channel members for their support of the channel as well. That's all I have for you today though, so if you want more, feel free to check out one of my other videos such as the ones on your screen now. Have a great rest of your day or night, and I hope to see you back here again soon.